Should you buy a house when you first move to the Philippines? This has been asked twice this month. Um, I've got a friend currently in the Philippines who's decided he loves the place, wants to settle down, etc. And I've got somebody who wants to move to the Philippines and do business there, etc. etc. Um, in both instances, I advise don't buy a house. Um, there's a couple of reasons why. First one is you can actually own the house, which leaves you open to risk. Second one is you don't know the areas. So you're very likely going to trust somebody um, to find a place for you. Where that doesn't really work is they buy a place that suits them. They don't think you would like it. They think they would like it. Um, an example of that is there's a nice subdivision um, it's quite far off the main road. Uh, it's just on the outskirts of Cebu City. Nice location. But the main road up to it meets at a Y junction. That Y junction is an entire market area. Getting to your home is an absolute nightmare. Doesn't matter what time of day because you've got to try and get through where you've got the market traders, then the illegal traders on the street, and then this narrow one single laneway left where it's pedestrianized and there's not enough room for vehicles going both ways. Um, those sort of things may seem, oh, well, it's nice when we first get there to have a market on the doorstep, but after six months of ha having to wait an hour to get up to the house, you get a bit tired of it. So my advice is rent. Rent first. You're, I mean, I'll be honest with you, with Minglanilia, I like Minglanilia because it's just out of Cebu City, so I've got the nice city side of stuff, and I've also got the access to the, the beaches in Marlborough to the south, Argo, etc. It's a location that suits me. It wouldn't suit everybody else. I know a lot of expats that want to meet up with a lot of other expats would find it a bit isolated. There is expats in the area, um, but generally, I have no interest with mixing with them. Um, there's a few good ones, you know, business-wise. Uh, they operate and they operate online, etc. Because I, I, I'll be honest, I'm more inclined to spend time with people that are of my similar age group, like most people. Um, but also, I'm interested in people that are more business orientated than just going to the Philippines to retire, because the conversations get a bit dry. Um, also, when you look at the majority, they're not from a similar background. So even with the age gap, it's not really the age that's an issue. It's that we come from completely different demographics and completely different interests. Um, where the business people, we have some, some middle ground there because we actually operate different businesses and even if we're completely different types of businesses you have the fact that you're both operating in the Philippines, both working online etc etc um, but you could find you move to an area, you bought a house and it's a nightmare there's a subdivision in Talise where the beach is on the other side because they promote it with the beach what they don't promote is there's all these little huts along the beach run where people pull up and get drunk and have their video key nights right outside your bedroom window every week. Um, when you went and looked at the house, you may not have seen any of this because you come in through the main gates, you've got the secure wall, you've seen the house, but over that secure wall is where it's party time every night. So there's a lot of reasons not to buy a house. The other ones that are an example of the house we looked at um, just a bit further south, between Naga and uh, Minglanilia. We got three prices for the same house. The first one was 800,000. The most expensive one was 1.5 million pesos. Um, it's the same house, different people sticking different commissions on for themselves. When you've been there a while, you can spend a bit of time researching the area. For example, if I wanted to rent an office in Minglanilia, I know the guys that own the hardware store at the bottom of my road own the building just round the corner from AA Barbecue, and they've got a top floor which is good enough for probably 10 to 15 people, and I can negotiate the rent because they know me personally, because I buy a lot of building materials from them. 
those relationships save you money and often a lot of money because they'll negotiate with you. You get a broker in, the broker already goes, foreigner pays more. I mean, I just had it here in Spain when I got ripped off from a, um, what do you call it, a drive shaft. I estimate I paid at least 250 euros more than I should have done. Um, but they knew I'm stuck because the vehicle was undrivable and they're stuck, I can't repair it the side of the road and I'm a foreigner so that makes me a target for three things and they abused it to the max. Am I complaining? Well, not really. It's my, I can't say it's my own fault but you expect these things in these sort of locations you will get shafted by people purely because they're opportunists. Um, I mean Dave down in Ibiza said the same uh, sorry, Steve down in Ibiza said the same. Um, they do it to him there. Um, I just had the same. My friend here in uh, here in well, he was down in Torrevieja. He had the same drive shaft issue on a different vehicle. They charged him around the same price, but he ordered the parts from Germany because he had another vehicle, um, which is the luxury I didn't have. Um, so doing that, he saved himself about 350 euros because they inflate the prices, they inflate the repair cost. Um, it's very common in Spain, and the same mentality is in the Philippines. Property prices, um, maintenance, re repair stuff. You, you, if you're a new guy on the block, people will abuse it. And I'm not just talking about Filipinos. Expats are just as bad, if not worse, in many cases. Um, the legacy scandal, it was expats that were shafting other expats. It wasn't Filipinos, um, because Filipinos didn't have that trust network within the expat community. It relied on expats to do it. Um, so from those, just those few reasons, I wouldn't buy. Not for at least the first year. Now I expand it out a little bit. Because you can't own it, you put in somebody else's name. You put in that person's name, they give you a risk. Um, the fact is they could kick you out of your own house and just take ownership of it. The other side of it being you get a condo. Condos are easy to buy, hard to sell. Um, houses are hard to sell at the price you want. You could pay 1.5 million for it, but everyone will offer you 800,000. Why? Because they know you need to sell it. When I bought my property, the, the one next door to my, the where, because we got two uh, compounds, one next to the other, the guy was looking at over 2 million pesos for it. I originally went in at 800,000, because I had 800,000 in cash. Um, he then come back and says, well, no, it's too low, and went away for a month. I'm not, I wasn't in a rush, because the thing is, the more time I had, the more money I could put together. Eventually, he come back and says, I'll take the 800,000 cash, but I want 1.2 million. So I've already talked him down from 2 million to 1.2 million, um, a saving of 800,000 pesos. No joke. 800,000 pesos. That's nearly half the price they originally wanted. That is how the Philippines operates. Doesn't matter if it's a car, doesn't matter if it's a house, doesn't matter what it is. If... If it was the other way around, and I really wanted it, he would want to sell it for 2.5 million. That's the other way the Philippines operates. If they know you want to buy it, they will inflate it. Where The way I did it, I basically turned around and said, well, I've got 800,000, take it or leave it. You know, I'm not bothered, and I walked away. He went away for a month, had a think about it, and then he's had some relationship issues with his wife because she's been spending all his money. So this bit of money was basically going to go in his pocket in a separate bank account, etc. Not talking too much about somebody else's business. But the point being is he wanted rid of the property and the cash siphoned off as quick as possible because he has some legal issues coming up to deal with getting rid of a uh, leech of a wife. Um, so... There is a lot of leeway in there, but when you buy a property in the Philippines, be aware, A, what I generally do with anything, I write it off as an expense. Um, I don't actually see things as an asset in many ways. I mean, I'll be honest with you, I can go to the Philippines now and retire. We have enough apartments, we have 
enough income we could just sit there but the problem is it doesn't do the kids any good for their education that spain ha has been an amazing experience for them um zoe has multiple teachers um and if i, look, I should do a video on autism actually there because it'll explain why i'm in the in spain um but the the point being here is you need to be understand that anything you invest you can lose anything you invest you should expect to lose that way you have nothing to lose when you lose it it may sound a bit blase and a bit oh but i want um i wasn't expecting my wife to take the house the car and the kids and everything else when i found out that she had another boyfriend or blah blah yeah i do but I mean, I'll be honest with you, I don't have those problems, <laughs> but I just write everything off anyway. Um, I put everything down as experience and a financial expense. I don't look at things like, oh, well, we've got this property. It's worth twice as much in the next five years. All that stuff is the nonsense that the West does. It's going, oh, well, the UK house prices are so high, blah, blah, blah. It goes up every year. Yes, but wages haven't, and jobs are in decline. No, no, there's more jobs. No, what you have is more zero-hour contracts and less skilled jobs. So the average wage is the bit you should be looking at across the whole country, not based on London figures or whatever, the whole country, and you'll get the realistic viewpoints. Because when a house goes up in price, it's fictitious. It's not real money. Unless it's physically in your hands, it is not real money. As such, do not work that way. Um, the other reason I would say that is I know somebody that actually mortgaged against their house and then got a second mortgage on that and is now working in China because uh, everything that they invested in went pear-shaped. Um, so as such, now relying on being a teacher in China because uh, they've got no more money left. Don't... <sighs> I mean, I, I'm not one for loans, I'm not one for debt, and that's why I keep pushing away from the debt. And this is what I'm saying. When you get a house, don't see it as an asset unless it is a real asset. A real asset to me is not living in it, it's renting it out, where it's bringing in money. And then you've got to look at the revenue. Is it making enough revenue to justify actually buying the thing in the first place? If I bought a Decker Homes house in, in uh, La Pata, just north of where we live in Mingdanilia, the mortgages are about eight thousand a month. The maximum rent I can get is six thousand. But to get the six thousand, I've got a toilet. I've got to put a new kitchen in. I've got to brick up the outside wall. Um, I may have to add an extra bedroom. It needs handrails. So I've got to invest money to not even meet the cost of the mortgage. And this is what you've got to look at. If you're going to go invest, is it a real investment? Don't take what a real estate agent tells you. They lie. They lie a lot. And here in Spain, the apartment that we are going to buy eventually, um, the guy was telling me there was two people buying it today, um, several months ago. What? Oh, it hasn't sold. No, because he was lying to my face. But that's what agents do. Agents are liars. You've got to. That's the way you look at them. When somebody walks up to you and says, I'm selling you something, I just think, liar. Um, I may sound a bit uh, aggressive with that, but if you take that mindset, they've got to sell it to you properly. They've got to turn around and go, no, I am not lying, and I will prove I'm not lying. Let's go and talk to John next door. John rents this apartment from this other guy I sold a house to six months ago. How much are you paying, John? Oh, I'm paying X. See, John pays more than the mortgages. There you go. There, there's an example. But the whole point is, don't buy. Please don't buy. Because most of the problems that come with it are people lose everything. Um, there was an example of a woman that was marrying a Japanese guy recently. She was already married. And when he found out, all sort of um, things blew up. But she'd already sold the land that they'd bought together. Um, one million pesos. 
looks for their new family home. And she already knew she was married, and she didn't, she didn't even bat an eyelid that she stole one million pesos from him and lied to his face about marriage and everything else. When you come across some of these bad people, they're really bad. And you may have compassion. They don't. They just wash it up. It's just... It's like when you catch somebody stealing or something in the film, they laugh at you. And it's a uh, mechanism of panic. Because you see it with the police. The police will do it sometimes when they're on camera. They'll be dealing with a murder case and they're all smiles and stuff. <laughs> and you're like, what are you smiling about? There's been a multiple murder here. Because it's a natural mechanism to smile and sort of laugh, laugh it off. But at the same time, from a Western point of view, you feel like strangling some people. <laughs> Um, but yeah, don't buy, please. Give it a year. The rents are cheap enough. Rents are cheaper than mortgage would be anyway. And I'll be honest with you, your money's better off in your bank. Just leave it there. It doesn't need to be spent today. It doesn't need to be spent tomorrow. It can wait till next year. Please save it.